Hello everyone, my name is Ms. Chismar and today we're going to be working on some third grade math. Um, the topic for today is rectangular arrays, so go ahead and let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is go ahead and pause this video and grab a whiteboard and a marker. Um, we're going to start with a short warm up, so as soon as you're ready you can go ahead and hit play and then we're going to start with our skip counting. So. Um, we're going to start just practicing counting by tens, and we want to make sure that we're able to count from count by tens anywhere in the number line. So we're going to start with 230, and we're just going to keep counting up by tens, and then once we hit 350, we're going to stop and go back down. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are counting up by tens, so we're starting at 230, then we'll go up by tens to 240. Our next number is going to be 250. And then we're going to have 260, continue to go up by 10, 270. Go ahead and take a second and write what you think the next two are going to be. Go ahead and pause if you need to or just fill them in real quick. But after 270, we're going to do 280, 290. Then we're going to get to 300, 310. Next one is going to be 320 because we're going up by tens every single time. Then we're going to have 330, 340, then 350. Remember when I said when we're getting to 350, we're going to go ahead and decide to go back down by tens. So 350, now we're taking away tens. So we're going to go down to 340. And we're going to be at 330. Go ahead and try and fill in the rest of those. I'm going to continue. If you want to take a second and try it on your own, you can go ahead and hit pause. I'm going to keep going. So 330, 320, 310, 300. And then our last one is going to be 290. So that's just a quick little refresher on how we count by tens going up or taking away. Um, just, just so we have that as in our memory so we can use it later on. Go ahead and clear my screen. I'm going to move on to our application problem. So this says that Sandy ha has a toy telephone that has buttons arranged in three columns and four rows. So draw a picture of Sandy's telephone. Write a repeated addition equation to show the total number of buttons on Sandy's telephone. Go, so go ahead, take two minutes, pause this video, go ahead and try it on your own with your whiteboard. And then when you hit play, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I drew it. So I went ahead and drew a telephone, and I had three columns, so one, two, three, and each column had um, four buttons in it, but then I also had um, the, the same thing, rows, four rows, and I drew my buttons uh, in squares, and I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then when I got to the last row, I decided to copy my phone and the keypad on my phone had a star, a zero, and a pound sign, which is like a hashtag in the last row. So when I wrote my repeated addition equation, I knew that I had three columns of four. So I went ahead and I counted each, um, each row. So I had three plus three plus three plus three to give 12. So that is how I did my application problem. Hopefully you did something similar. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to our next example. So go ahead and take a second. You're gonna need some square tiles. Um, they're little manipulatives that you can use. And then if you don't have square tiles, you can go ahead and use construction paper and just cut out some squares. That's another super easy way to um, use this. But we're gonna make two different arrays here. So you're gonna make one with two rows of five tiles, and you're gonna make another with two columns of five tiles. So go ahead and take a second and work on that now. Um, you can go ahead and pause this video while you work on that if you need extra time. I'm gonna go ahead and move forward, so go ahead and pause now so that you don't see the answers, but I'm gonna show them now. So this is what I got. So here we have our two rows of five, and over here we have our two columns of five. So Let's do some like um, simil similarities and differences. So how are they similar? Well, they are the same shape. One is just flipped on its side. 
as so let's take a look the two rows of five is going a horizontal which is this way and the two columns of five are going vertical which is this way um let's see do they have the same number of tiles let's take a look whoops let's go back this way sorry about that whoa there we go so let me oh my goodness i'm gonna grab my pen so there's i see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten tiles here and i see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten tiles here so they have the same number of tiles and they're the same shape but they're just flipped differently like we said one was horizontal and one was vertical so let's go ahead and write that repeated addition equation here so for this one, our repeated addition equation is gonna be five plus five, because we have two rows here with five in each. So five plus five equals 10. And over here, we're gonna go by rows. So two plus two plus two plus two plus two. So two plus two, five times. I think that's five times equals 10. So are the equations the same? No, they are slightly different, but the answer is the same. So over here, we went when we added them up by the number in each row. So we had five in this row and five in this row, and that gave us the 10. Um, over here, we also added by rows, but because there are only two in each row, we had to add them five times. So two plus two plus two plus two plus two. That's so we're always going to add by rows, but because of the way that they're structured, the equations are going to be different, but we're still going to have the same answer for this particular problem. So these are called rectangular arrays because they are in the shape of a rectangle. And they're always going to, if you have two different numbers, then they're always going to be rectangular. So let's take a look at the next one so we can kind of elaborate on that. So I want you to build five groups of three or five columns of three. And I also would like you to build three groups of four or three columns of four. Remember, if it says groups, that's the columns. Um, so go ahead and do that now. Make sure when you're building them that they all the tiles are touching. You don't want any gaps because we want them to look like a rectangle. So go ahead, pause right now and take some time to work on that. I'm gonna go ahead and show the answers now. So if you don't wanna see them, make sure you pause. But this is what I ended up coming up with. So here are our five gr groups of three. And here are our um, three groups of four. So I have three groups of four over here. And that is because I have one, two, three columns and one, two, three, four tiles going in each column. So when I write my repeated addition equation for that, it would look like three plus three plus three plus three equals 12 because there are 12 tiles all together. So I have that, and remember, we're always adding by rows. So we have one, two, three, four rows, so we should have one, two, three, four numbers in our equation. Let's take a look over here. One, two, three, four, five. I have five tiles in each column, and so since we're adding by rows, we're gonna go three plus three plus three plus three plus three equals, oops, there we go, 15. So remember, one way that you can check to make sure your answer is correct is by counting the number of tiles in our array. So let's double check here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So our answers do match.
All right, so one thing that I want you to notice is that we have two different numbers here. So we have five for the um, number in each column and we have three columns total. In this one, we have four uh, tiles in each group or in each column and we have three columns total. That's gonna change when we look at our next thing. So square arrays. Go ahead and build this on your, um, with your tiles. This is three groups of three. So because the numbers are the same, they're gonna look, it's gonna look more like a square because you, as you can see, we have three columns total, one, two, three, and we have three tiles in each column. So one, two, three. And that's gonna make it look more like a square. Um, so go ahead, take a second and build four groups of four and five groups of five. So you're gonna have four columns with four tiles in each, and you're gonna have five columns with five tiles in each. So go ahead and try that. And then I'm gonna show the answers now. So if you don't wanna see them, make sure you pause. So let's take a look. So I have two more square arrays. There are four tiles in each column. And then it looks like this. So let's go ahead and write a repeated addition equation for both. So I have four plus four plus four. Whoops, let me erase that. Four, here we go. Plus four equals 16. Remember, you can double check by counting your tiles. And then over here, I have five plus five plus five plus five. Then I have one more, so plus five, and that equals 25. Again, you can count your tiles to make sure you have the correct number. And that's kind of how we find a square array. So when we have the same number of columns and the same number of rows, then it's gonna look like a square. So now I'm gonna clear, and we're gonna go ahead and move to the problem set. Go ahead, I'm gonna go back to my main screen. Let me pull that up for us. Give me one quick second. Perfect. I'm gonna share that with you. I can find it. Sorry about all that confusion. I had to find it real quick. We're gonna work on the problem set. Oops, this one. So we're gonna do one through five and then I'm gonna have you do the exit ticket on your own. If you'd like some extra practice, you can always work on the homework as well. So I'm gonna draw. So it says construct, construct a rectangle with two rows of three tiles. So it's gonna, we're gonna draw that out. And if you wanna try this on your own before I show you the answers, you are more than welcome to do that. I'm gonna go through them one by one. So that's what it should look like. We have two rows with three tiles in each. I'm very, very sorry for my drawing. I'm working on I'm drawing on the computer. It's a little difficult, but let's go ahead and write a repeated addition equation. So remember, we always add by rows. So three plus three equals six. So now it says construct a rectangle with two columns of three tiles. So two columns, I'm gonna make those here, and three tiles in each. Just like that, and so when we add by rows, it's gonna be two plus two plus two equals six. Remember, you can always count the number of tiles to make sure you have the correct answer. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to number two. Construct a rectangle with five rows of two tiles and um, write a repeated addition equation. So five rows, two tiles each, one, there's one row, Two, 
and 5. Write a repeated addition equation, so we're adding it by row, so 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 one more, and that is going to equal 10. Now we want a rectangle with five columns of two rows, so I'm going to draw my first. I'm going to draw all five columns first. Three, four, and five. And then I'm going to add another row. So it should look something like that. Again, I'm very, very sorry for my drawings. Um, and then the repeated addition equation is going to be 5 plus 5 because we are adding by rows and that is going to equal 10. So they should match. You see how these numbers are just, they just slip the columns and the rows. So they should be, if you're ever just switching the columns and the rows, the drawings and the answers should be fairly similar. Go ahead and play my screen, move down to number 3. Construct a rectangle of nine tiles that has equal rows and columns. So I know that when we did three groups of three on our examples, that it had nine tiles. So I'm going to draw that. You can play around with it and see if there are any other ways to do that, but I think this is the best way because it has equal rows and equal columns because when it says equal rows and equal columns, it means that it wants to have th something the same number. So we want to make a square array. So for example, this is three columns of three rows, so those are equal. So this has a total of nine tiles and it looks like a square. Now it says construct a rectangle of 16 tiles that has equal rows and columns. Well, we also did that one in our examples. So I'm going to draw four going this way. And you have to draw that four times. So four columns with four rows should give us 16. We'll double check that when we finish drawing. So that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 total. Um, let's look at 4a while we can see it. What shape is this? This is a rectangular array. So it's in the shape of a rectangle. Uh, let's move on to 4b. I'm going to clear my screen. Redraw the above shape with one column removed. So I'm just going to take a pen and cross out one column so that we know what we have to draw. So I'm going to cross out this one. And then it wants us to draw three columns with three rows. So we just did that above, but we're going to do it again. So there is that. Three by three equals nine tiles total. What shape is this? Well, we just talked about that if we had the same number of columns and the same number of rows, then it was going to be a square array. Go ahead, clear my screen so we can look at our last problem together. Oh, there is no more problems. Perfect. Um, we'll just do the exit ticket. So construct a rectangle with two rows of five tiles. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. Two rows, five tiles each. So it's going to look like this. There are five tiles. Here another five tiles. Oops, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Um, and now write a repeated addition equation. So it's just two rows, and we're always adding by rows. So it's going to be five plus five equals ten tiles total. And that's going to be it. So let me go ahead and stop sharing. That's the exit ticket. Um, if you want some additional practice, the link in the learning guide will take you to this 
the problems that we were just working on. And there's an additional homework page that you can work on if you want extra practice. You don't have to, it's just an extra resource for you to have. Um, that's going to be it for my lesson today. I hope you had a great time working with me and I had a great time working with you. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye.